guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to talk about a few types of my carnivorous plants. Since the day I have built my balcony gardens, many insects and pests been attracted by my plants. This is the reason why I want to get some carnivorous plants for help, and they do a really good job. This is Sarracenia purpura hybrid, Sarracenia scalabelle, and Sarracenia swaniana. Sarracenia commonly called tramper pitcher. Sarracenia are not American pitcher plants. They attracted insects by the leaves, colors, scents, and nectar secretions. And the upper trumpet pitcher ring is fully wettable that causes insects to sleep deep down so they can digest it. This type of carnivorous plant is called a spoon leaf sundrill. It has sweet tasting sticky hair on their leaves. This is where they use to trap insects. When the insects are trapped, it will slowly roll up the leaves and digest the nutrients from its prey. The sticky juices is not toxic. The insects are not poisoned, they just can't escape. Carnivorous plants love humid environment. They love to sit in a consistently wet place. So I place them in a recycled Tupperware. Water level not higher than half of the pot. Refuse the water when it almost dry. Remember, never use tap water. Use only distilled water or rain water. Some people don't understand why carnivorous plants cannot take tap water and regular potting soil. They are very picky on this. So the function of the root system of all carnivorous plants is to design to adapt water with a very poor nitrogen level and they prefer acidic soils. They are supposed to get nutrients from its trap, not from the root. So a regular potting soil or tap water with rich nutrients or minerals can kill your plants. Growing on top of sphagnum moss and some perlites or sand is good enough to duplicate their best living environment. Or you can also use peat moss soil. Peat moss is a mixture of sphagnum moss and other organic materials. Share with you my own opinions from the observation. My carnivorous plants, which ever got root rocks before, they were all growing in peat moss soil when I accidentally give too much water. But for those which I grow them in a consistently wet sphagnum moss, not even one get root rot before. So I do some research and I find out that bacteria and fungus are not active while they are living in sphagnum moss because it has antispectic properties on pure sphagnum moss. Maybe that's the key? Now I'm going to show you how to differentiate the fake and real sparkling moss. Maybe I can't say it's all fake, but they mix with something else. It looks messy. If a pure sparkling moss is supposed to look like this, you can take it out one by one. If you are a fan of growing colorful plants with unique foliage, carnivorous plants are suitable for you, especially pitcher plants. If you know their habits, they are very easy to grow. They can help you to get rid of unwanted insects in your gardens. That's all for today's video. See you next time.